What's cooking, everyone? This is Nice at the Kitchen Table. I'm Seth. And I'm Cal. And today we're talking about the Power Nine of Budget Commander. Yes. So, uh, Mitch over at Commander's Quarters recently did a video about the Power Nine in Commander. And it got us thinking, what would the Power Nine in Budget Commander be? Yeah, for those, I'm, most people are probably aware of this, but just really quickly, Power Nine are like the nine like objectively most powerful cards in Magic. Yeah, your Black like Lotus, cards. Moxon. Divine Moxon, yeah. We have t- and then three... Blue cards, Time Twister, Ancestral Recall, and Time Walk. Right, yeah. So uh, we each separately made our own list of nine cards that we think are the most powerful cards in Budget Commander. Mm-hmm. We're going to discuss them now and then, you know, come hopefully come up with an objective list of what the most powerful cards in Budget Commander is. Yep, so let us know in the comments if you agree, if you disagree, and with... Uh, that you'll notice that our list will be missing Soul Ring. We will not yes. include it at all. We excluded Soul Ring. There's just there's no reason to talk about it. We all know about it. There's nothing we can add to the conversation to talk yeah. about Soul Ring that you don't already know. In fact, I think we've already spent too much time talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get into it. We'll just let you know that we are just picking cards that make any deck in that color better. Mm-hmm. Although this will be a little bit more difficult because budget decks typically run... Uh, focus more on synergy rather than this abject power. So this is, these yeah. are just going to be very subjective lists. Yep. So, all right, well, so with that, Seth, start us off with your list today. Yeah, my first card on my list is Treasure Cruise. It's an eight-mana sorcery that lets you draw three cards. Um, the key is it has Delve. So as long as you have seven cards in your graveyard, you can just s- send those to exile and pay one blue to draw three cards. It's an Ancestral Recall. Yep, fixed Ancestral Recall. It's literally one of the Power 9 cards for budget. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) And in Commander, you're always going to have enough cards. Yeah, I mean, your creatures are dying, you're playing Aces and Sorceries, you're cracking fetch lands like Evolving Wilds Mm -hmm. and Terrible Over Expanse. You said it was on your list too? Yep, on my list. You're just going to have stuff in your graveyard that you just don't need back. It's literally just an Ancestral Recall for less than a million dollars. (laughs) Yeah. So, I just... Any deck running blue would mm-hmm. be better with Treasure Cruise in it. Yep. So, and the, these cards aren't in any specific order. No. I don't know if we said that or not, but no. All right. Um, next, this is gonna be on my list here is Dark Ritual. Pretty simple. It's a one mana instant for one black. You get three black mana to your mana pool. That's also on my list. Oh, it's it's super good. Seth, yeah. why why is it on your list? Oh, uh, it's. I mean, it's a budget Black Lotus. I've heard people say that. I don't know if I completely agree, mm-hmm. but, but it's definitely yeah. yeah. Um, it lets you get your commander out early, so you can start getting that value engine online. It lets you double spell mm. on an earlier turn. I mean, how many times have you been like looking at your hand, thinking, "Man, if I just had one or two more mana, I could just, I could just take this game." Oh, I could yeah. get both of these cards all out, the all three of these cards out, all the time. Put myself in a winning position. Dark Ritual will do that for you. So many times, I'm like, "Oh, I just def- don't quite have enough mana to do this mm-hmm. and activate this ability." Or, you know, or whatever. But yeah, Dark Ritual lets you do that. We'll get there. And there more. is there is a right and a wrong way to play it though. If you're just powering out your commander on like turn one or two with Dark Ritual, you are asking to be two for one. Someone is going to remove yeah. your commander, and then you went from in the lead to so far behind. Right. You lost a card in Dark Ritual. Your commander now costs two more. Uh, yeah. It's just a bad, it's, it's a bad move. You got to be so, careful with it. Be very you can't just to use it. launch out way too early with yeah. nothing to protect. But it definitely, and it's it's even good later game. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. it's fantastic because it can let you triple or quadruple spell mm-hmm. when you normally couldn't. Yeah, I love Dark Ritual. So next on my list is Sun Titan, which is a six six vigilance for six mana, four white white, and it says whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you can just return any permanent card from your graveyard, power or mana value three or less straight onto the battlefield. So, I mean, I love it, first of all, because it's not only an attack trigger, it's also an ETB trigger. Mm-hmm. So you're not spending six mana just to wait a full cycle. Wait till I untap. Yeah. <laughs> you're dropping that, you're immediately getting something back. Your commander's sphere, you could draw another card, your crack lands. It's kind of like, like building your own Frexian Arena almost with the commander's sphere. That's true. That gets you mana. <laughs> yeah. Draw a card every <laughs> single turn. Yeah. Tap for mana. Sack, draw a card. Tap sack, yeah. yeah it's so great. Uh, you can start getting your Evolving Wilds again. Yeah, just build these loops with these fetch lands. And so people say white can't ramp. You're ramping every <laughs> turn with that now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I it's And it's a 6-6 six, six Vigilance, so it's an amazing blocker. It's an amazing attacker. There's 
very few reasons not to include yeah. it in a deck. You can blink it, you can sacrifice and recur and reanimate it. Like there's so many ways to abuse this ability here. Yep. And that I, I don't mention it. it's also on my, on my list as well. Oh it is? So, yeah. Well, are we three for three? <laughs> yeah, I think we are. Yeah. There will be some differences, I promise. <laughs> Uh, we, there, we, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> What's All your right. next one? Uh, next one here. Uh, in the same vein of Sun Titan, I pick Savine's Reclamation. I did not choose that one. That's oh, our first difference. I'll tell you why you're wrong here, Seth. Okay. So for three mana, two and a white, you get a sorcery that says return target permanent card with mana yeah. value three or less from your graveyard yeah. to the battlefield. So it is a good card. Yep. All right. If this spell was cast from your graveyard, so it means reclamation, you may copy the spell and you may choose a new target for the copy as flashback four and a white. Mm -hmm. The flashback is what I love it because of that. It's a good card on its own, but that flashback is just phenomenal. Yeah, you get up to three different permanents with this. It's so good. It's amazing. So, like, I think objectively, Sun Titan is better. However, so it means reclamation fits lower on your curve. And mm -hmm. gets you to Sun Titan faster. Yeah. You can start using it earlier, which makes all the difference in a Absolutely. game where other people are already running off with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so, good. Uh, yeah. Like, for the same reason, Sun Titan, you can get those same lands back. I specifically love this as a ramp spell, an extremely versatile ramp spell. So, for example, take, take Rampant Growth, like the poster boy of green land ramp. Literally, it's, like the number one ramp. Yeah. That two, and um, Cultivate. Cultivate. Kodama Thank you. Wow. Yeah. So, for Ramp Growth, two mana, you get a tapped land. Yep. So, it means Reclamation, three mana, untapped, untapped. land. Yeah. So, it is in the same Hard to argue with there. that. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, it has a flashback. It can get more than just lands. It's it's so versatile. Any white deck is just infinitely better having a Simeon's Reclamation mm -hmm. in the 99. Yeah. That brings us to our next one. Mine is Garruk's Uprising. There's a three-man enchantment, two and a green. It says, when Grook's Uprising enters the battlefield, if you have a creature with four power four or greater, draw a card. Whenever you drop a creature with power four or greater, you draw a card. And the icing on the cake is it gives your entire board trample. I would pay three mana just for that effect because <laughs> yeah. that will win games by itself. We have similar effects like three mana give you haste and fervor. Right, and yeah. That's played. Exactly. So three mana to give all your creatures trample, amazing by itself, late game. But early game, the card advantage that this is going to give you oh, is just going to put you over this the This goes in my card advantage slot when I'm building my deck. Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. if you're running green, chances are you're going to have multiple creatures with power four grade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, like, I mean, just any green deck typically is going to have a mm -hmm. creature with power four grade yep. or multiple of them. So you play it. it Usually, immediately replaces itself and it just churns out cards for the rest of the game. It's you wouldn't consider this a cantrip, but it does cantrip. It, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it didn't make my list. It was in the list of it was in my card pool. It didn't quite make my yeah, power kinda, nine. I don't mention, okay. but it's it's so good. I have like an almost every green deck. So what did you put in instead? Instead, I picked another green card, Eternal yeah. Witness. Okay. Fun yeah, fact: Ewin is budget these days after one. multiple it reprints. Is. Yeah, it's so good. It's down. So for three mana, one and two green, you get a creature human shaman and two one. <sighs> so good. When Eternal Witness enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, and that's great because you're getting your instants and sorceries as well that you can whatever answer Anything, you need. The best card you've played all game. Yep. You get back in your hand. It's not quite a tutor, you know, because you're not going through your library. But if, you're, if your graveyard is big enough, yeah. it could almost be a tutor. Mid to late game, you have many options in there. Whatever situation, oh, yeah. the whatever the situation requires, I'm sure you have something in your graveyard that can mm. help you right then and there. And this isn't, usually isn't a one time effect because it's on a body. Again, same thing with Sun Titan. You can blink it, Bounce it you can reanimate it. It. Yeah, it works as a blocker. You can sacrifice it. Like It, it can wear equipment and counters. Like, yep. There's so many things you can do because it has a body. This is why it's so much better than just like a regrowth or recollect yeah yeah it's more versatile um and then creatures fun fact will die to my next card <laughs> which is blasphemous act uh my favorite board wipe in all of commander probably um so good it's so good it's a nine mana sorcery costs eight and a red that does 13 damage to each creature but what makes it so good is it costs one less for each creature on the battlefield and in commander with four players even if that's only two play two creatures per player that's already eight creatures it. it fulfills the generic cost there so and Seth why are you playing a board wipe in the first place <laughs> two <laughs> yeah, creatures, creatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're not going to be casting this if there's not creatures that need to die the reason you're casting it is to get rid of creatures like how many times said. have you cast this for more than two mana 
more than two? More never. Than two men. Never. Not right? once. Not a single time. I don't even know if I've ever even cast it for two men. I can count on like, <laughs> like one hand, maybe like three times. I don't, I, I cast don't, it for two mana. I don't know if I've ever cast it for two mana. This is a one man and just wipe everything. It's so good. Yeah. And and why this is better than other board wipes is typically the play pattern with board wipes is you you wipe the board and you have maybe one play after that. Yes. Yeah. Board exactly. wipe is typically yeah. in a lot of cases your entire turn. Yeah, so you play like uh even farewell, mm. which is most people consider that budget. probably the best board wipe in all of Magic, or all of Commander at least, right? Yeah. It's still, you're dropping six mana for it, which is the majority of your lands. You may or may not be able to do anything after that, so you board wipe pass. And now you're the last person to do anything. But the yeah. Last act reverses that. Yeah, you no, you're totally right. You're the first person to rebuild. Tap a mountain, board wipe, and Play you can start doing other stuff. Yeah, and if you have haste then you can start swinging. It's not only a board wipe, it's board. also yeah. an enabler to help your deck do its thing it's more so effectively. Good. It didn't make my list. It was in my it was in my card pool as well, but it I, you can tell by the way I've talked about it, I I still love this card though. Yeah. So I was hesitant to put any type of removal on my list, but yeah. It I think it's totally worth it. Yeah. I was also hesitant to put removal on my list, but there's one that snuck through. I picked Imprisoned in the Moon. Ooh, okay, targeted removal. Yeah, it's targeted. Yeah. So it's, 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 I'll tell you why it's good, though. So for three mana, you get an enchantment aura. It's just two and a blue. It reads, enchant creature, land, or planeswalker. Enchanted permanent is a colorless land with tap, add a colorless, and loses all other card types and abilities. So biggest threat on the board? Whatever's <laughs> annoying you the most? It's now a waste. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good so one. So, like, yeah. I mean, you get three different card types. I've never enchanted this on a Planeswalker. It, it didn't make work. my list, but that's a great one. It wouldn't work. But, but, I mean, as a budget deck, I'm constantly playing against other decks that run non-budget land bases. It's so, like, I played... Yeah. This works on Cabal Coffers. It shuts down the Nick though. It shuts down even the Gaia's Cradles. It just turns them into a waste. Just a waste, yeah. But even shuts better than that... shuts down their mana base that they're probably relying on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But even better than that, it just pins someone's command of the board. Yeah, because it's even better than, like... Um, Darksteel Mutation, right? Right, because Darksteel Mutation turns it into a super blocker. Yeah. Right? Or they can just sack it and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, in Prison of the Moon, it does, it's not a creature anymore. You it's can't a land. You can't block how with a land. How do you sack a land? You yeah. can't block a land. And Very so how specific do, cards. How do we feel about ramping opponents? I mean, the best removal in all of Magic is probably Path to Exile, so, which they get to then choose what color they're getting. Um, this one, they don't. It's a waste. So, yeah, it doesn't advance your game plan, per se, but it takes the person who's in the lead and just shuts their deck off. Just tells them, like, sorry, buddy, you're probably not playing Magic. For right. That. Or if they have something that's shutting you down, all Get of a sudden that. you're back online, right? Yeah. You're running a token deck. They have an Elish Norn. You're just hosed. Get that out of here. And all of a sudden now you're Get back it out online. Of here. Yeah, so. That didn't just happen, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we love yeah. Imprisoned the Moon. That makes my power nine. So my next one, going back to creatures, is Champion of Lambold. Lambhold. I don't know how you say that. We'll call it Lambhold. So, but Lamb Lambhold is very cute. Lambhold. Lambhold. <laughs> Bolt the lamb. <laughs> one so, green green for a one one human warrior, and it says creatures with power less than Champion of Lambhold's power can't block creatures you control. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Lambhold. It's so good because it will win games for you. If you're running any type of like creature, not even heavy, it doesn't even have to be like a super creature heavy deck. Even if you're not playing a creature every turn, you could be playing a creature every other turn and I still think it's more than worth it. Because you get him up to power five mm -hmm. and all of a sudden that's gonna cover most of the board, can't block anything you control. It's, that's, it's gonna close out games. Yeah, and notice it's not evolve. So you don't have to worry about playing creatures that mm -hmm. are bigger than and you. You don't have to pay for the banner or the counters. They just happen. Yeah, so this is good outside of even just token decks or plus plus one counter decks. If you're just if you're in green, you're playing creatures. If you're playing creatures, you're powering up Champion of Lambhold, and then those creatures can attack with impunity. Yep, completely unblocked. This can, great. this is this like a budget crater hoof in a way. This makes them all unblockable. Like yeah, I mean you could call it in that. a way. Yeah. Maybe not quite, but it's it's so sneaky. It's good. Was that on your list? Uh, yes, yeah. Champion Lambhold was definitely on my list. Cool. It was, it's probably one I'm most open to cutting, but it, I, I think it made it. Yeah, I could see people in the comments you could, disagreeing. You could convince me otherwise, but I, it's definitely still in the conversation, I feel like. Yeah. 
What's your next one? My next one here is probably my favorite on my list. I picked Itali Primal Storm. Interesting. That's probably the first one that you've said that I might straight up disagree well, Seth, with. let me tell you why you're wrong. Ah, uh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, for six mana, four, and two red, you get a legendary elder dinosaur. It's a six, scary six. bomb. I mean, you're just winning yeah. off awesome points at this point. <laughs> 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 so whenever Itali attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. For free? For free. <laughs> if you get one attack with Itali... You Chances are you're popping off. You're gonna, if not win, you're. I, ahead. I've never seen yeah. someone get an attack trigger from Atali and just not win the game. Yeah. It just gives you that much of an advantage. If you're See, in the, if you're in the lead, it'll take you to the end. And if you're if you're far behind, it'll put you in the lead. But that right there I, is why I might disagree, because you drop an Atali, the entire table collectively starts panicking for some way to murder that dinosaur. So you have to wait an entire cycle to get back. Untap and swing. So you're saying it dies to removal? Is that why it's bad? It dies to Doomblade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so you do bring a good point. Like there's 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 like Dark Ritual. There's a right and a wrong right. way. You got to be play. smart for it to be good. Yeah, you have to play in the right situation. If you just run it out and just on a prayer hope that it survives until your next turn. Just cast it when your opponent has two glue uh, open. No yeah, problem. It's probably not going to make it. So like yeah. you got to like you want to make sure there's some way that you can get that attack trigger mm -hmm. off. I mean, it, you're in you're in red, so you've probably got haste enablers running around. Yep. I, I think it's smart just to run those regardless if you got a fervor and anger. I love. Well, what commander deck doesn't boots. have like a lightning greaves or a. Or in, if you're in budget, you got a SO foot boots. Yeah. Slap it on there. You're going to the races. Yep. Yeah, if you have any way of giving it haste, yeah, you're right. It's totally worth being on this list. Um, I think it is kind of situational because if you don't have some way to do mm -hmm. something like that, protect I, it or haste it, it's. I don't know. Well, it's a good one. That's a scary. But there's a reason. I think raw there's, power. Yeah. It's, I think yeah. there's a reason the whole table will collectively gasp and panic to kill it because it's so good. Yeah. yeah I, I, think it, I think it fits my power nine. I think yeah. any red deck would just benefit from having a Tali in it. Staying in red, my next one is Mana Geyser, which is a five mana sorcery that says add one red for each tapped land your opponent's control. And again, we're in Commander, which is a four person game. Mm -hmm. So. You pay this, so it's five mana to cast, which means you're probably on at least turn four, five, six in the game. That's four mana there, five mana there, five mana there. That's 14 mana that you just added to your pool to cast on anything. Usually that's going to be either you're going to double, triple, quadruple spell mm. and win the game from that, or you're going to pump it into some nasty X spell and just absolutely annihilate somebody's board. Yeah, this when someone plays mana guys, that's basically their way of saying, I'm about to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yeah, you're closing out the night. You're like, all right, who wants to go to bed? Because we're ready. Yeah, this is it didn't quite make my list, but it, it was definitely good. the conversation. It's, it's so good. unbelievably good. I love it. I don't know how often I've seen it played and not end the game. Yeah, I'm out leads me to my next one here. I picked just I had to pick a straight up tutor here. I selected Diabolic Tutor. Oh, yeah, that didn't make mine, but that's a good one. Yeah, it is, it's so Demonic Tutor, yeah. I think, is Commander, regardless of budget, Power 9. Diabolic mm -hmm. Tutor is just that card with two more mana. Again, I'm trying to think of any other budget card that can just get any answer you need in any situation. I don't know if there is. Because, like, in, in budget, there's so many Specifically ways. Specifically in budget, if, yeah. If you're, if you're looking for s certain cards in your deck, there's ways if you, there's ways to get it. Like, there's a whole cycle that'll get you instant sorcery, sorcery or creatures or, creatures or, or enchantments. artifacts. You can transmute to get specific cards. But, like, I think Diabolic yeah. Tutor is the only one that allows you the flexibility of just getting anything that you need in the moment. I mean, if you can even get a land. Lands, yeah. get a land. If you need a removal, get a board wipe, your win con. It'll get you whatever you need. Anything. So yeah, I mean, four mana is a steep price, but and it's if you need like, it bad enough, what is it? Less than a buck now? Yeah, it's. We'll throw the price on here on the screen, but know. it's. I think just being able to get anything you need in a pinch. Yep. Will make any black deck better having Diabolic Tutor. So good. Uh, my next one is Colorless, which this is my first Colorless pick on here. It's surprising because the original Power Nine is like yeah, almost all Colorless. Yeah. <laughs> so Black Blade Reforged which is a two-mana legendary so equipment it. artifact. It says, Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. 
You can equip for seven, which is kind of bonkers. That's a lot. Or you can equip it to a legendary creature for three. So you're most of the time going to throw this on your commander, and your commander now gets plus one for all of the lands you control, which is going to be anywhere between four and 15, right? So I love it because it's a backup plan on one piece of cardboard. Yeah, it's a Even if you're not looking to do commander damage, even if you're not in a combat winny deck, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, if you can't find your combo pieces... Or if your engine is just not working, all of a sudden now combat takes, damage, commander damage your is a two, valuable two commander into a, <laughs> yeah. into a game ending threat. Yeah, your two two commander is now a seventeen seventeen in late game. Mm. You know, somebody's just board wiped so many times you can't do anything. You swing for commander damage and you win. And if at any point you just care about like the power of your commander, like how well because now that it, can, is. it can block things too. It's oh yeah, phenomenal. So it's a super blocker, and it like it just triggers so many things that cares about your commander's power. I love it. It's it's yeah. There's there's very few times when I'm building a commander deck and it doesn't go on my list of cards when I'm brewing. Mm -hmm. It'll frequently get cut for something that synergizes better. But it's almost always in my original list of cards. Yeah. I think most decks would just be better running a black blade. Yep. So, all right, Seth, what's your next one here? So, my next one is good old Gary. Good old Gary. <laughs> Gray Merchant of Asphodel. It's a five mana zombie creature, 2 4. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black, and you gain life equal to the total amount of life lost this way. Um, and why he's so good is because he's got two pips on himself. So, so a bare minimum, you're guaranteed. Bare minimum, two. Six life to you yep. and ping your opponents for But that's two. never going to happen, right? Because you're going to have either a enchantment over here, another creature, a mana dork over here, something. You're almost never going to have less than like six devotion. Yeah. And that's 18 total life you're gaining. 18 total life you're draining. Mm -hmm. That's 36 life <laughs> difference oh that you're... <laughs> So like obviously good. he's best in like a mono black deck, right? But because any any I deck have that has black my, is going to have black pips yep. running around somewhere, right? But I have it in my Orzov Aristocrats deck. Yeah, and it's even always in a, even in a two color time. deck, you're still going to hit four, five, or six devotion easily. Mm -hmm. So and like the thing with Gary is like you're not just playing it. It's just like Ewit. You're not just playing it for the one. Right, time. you're bouncing it. You're, you're bouncing recurring it. it. You're recurring it. It it's becomes a great blocker. You got the sacrifice. It, all the same creature creature synergies. Yep. When you staple this kind of ability on a creature. Oh, yeah. That's what makes it good. And, I mean, if you're running, like, black-white, you know, for example, you have ways to now use all of that extra life that you have. Mm -hmm. It's never just going to sit there and do nothing. That It's going to power something through. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, that's that's our power nines here. Seth, What? how many do we have in common? We had Treasure Cruise, Sun Titan. Yep. Champion of Lamhold. Mm -hmm. Dark Ritual. So we had four in common. That's that's common. the Knights of the Kitchen Table Power Four. <laughs> Our Power Four Our Commander power Budget. Four. Uh, rounding out the rest of Seth's picks, what did you have? Uh, so after that, I had Garuk's Uprising, Blasphemous Act, Mana Geyser, Black Blade Reforged, and Gary. Perfect. And then the rounding out the rest of my picks, I had Eternal Witness, Imprisoned in the Moon, Sabine's Reclamation, and Atali Primal Storm, and yeah. Diabolic Tutor. These are all good. It's really hard to say that any of mine are better than your picks or yours are better than mine yeah, i would love i would be happy drawing any of these cards today yeah that's that's the thing is like almost all of these cards are never going to be a top deck and a grown crap this is a top deck you're like sweet i have something i can do here yeah yeah so we did a couple auto mentions we just want to run through really quick yeah just rapid just cards fire. that we we would love to see on this list as well but we had we restricted ourselves to nine cards so i had goblin bombardment you know sack and ping oh yeah Warstorm Surge, it's kind of similar Just strategy play there. play creature, do damage to face. Yep. It's so uh, Darksteel Mutation, I thought about adding it, but I removed it because I didn't, I don't know, just mm. targeted removal was really hard for me to put on right. there. I still think Imprison the Moon is probably still better than Darksteel, but... I think you might be you right. Can tell, tell me why I'm wrong. No, I think you might be right. And then my last honorable mention was Sir Conrad, Ooh. which is so good. Yeah, he's on my list of honorable mentions. So. <sighs> I ended up cutting him from my list of nine just because I feel like he's a little bit too situational. Yeah, I, I love him because you slap him down. It's commander. There's four players. P creatures are going to die. People are going to get milled. So people are going to reanimate. So it's going to get exiled. Right, like, yeah. There's so it's, many times he's just incidentally going to get... Yeah, he's just going to trigger. Yeah. 
And then a lot of times at Sir Conrad, if someone just plays a board wire, <laughs> you just win the game. <laughs> yeah, you play Sir Conrad and you're like, please, please board wipe you me. You don't have to be the one board wiping. Please. <laughs> Your opponent's stuck in a rock and a hard place. There's a ton of creatures. They, yeah. They're behind on board. But if they board wipe, a board wipe Con- can win the game with yeah, Sir Conrad. It's, he's so stinking good. Yep. So he made my honorable, men- uh, honorable mentions. I also had Austere Command, which is the modality Ooh, good of one. that removal, of that good board wipe. One. There's so many ways you can just turn this into a one side. That board one's wipe. really common, even in not budget commanders. Yeah. So. For sure. Uh, I also had Garrick's Uprising. It made my, my honorable mention. Yeah. I had Ornithopter of Paradise. It, this is a weird pick. pick for me. Good pick. Because it's just a mana dork. However, yeah. I just think the two mana for a mana of any color, that's that's above rate. Well, it's a creature, too. And then it's a creature with a built-in evasion. Mm-hmm. So in the early game, it ramps you. In the late game, it wears equipment. It wears counters. It blocks in the air. Again, it has all these creature synergies. Yeah. I just think any it's deck so can run that and get good. more out of it than just a mana dork. Yeah, that's a good one. And then lastly, I didn't even think about that one, but yeah. Yeah, I I, I really like Ornithopter. I I play that over a Signet. Tell me why I'm wrong. My last one here is Viseraseer. Just any very deck, similar to Sir Conrad. S- slap a Sacrifice Outlet in there. That deck's gonna get bitter. It prevents yeah. Dark Sea mutations and Imprison the Moon. If you're gonna have to, oh no, not Imprison the Moon. It doesn't nope. get that. But it doesn't get Dark Sea mutation. But it like prevents tucking and theft. And that scrying is so important. Oh, don't discount that. You yeah. sack enough creatures, you can just scry enough that it's just basically almost a tutor. Kind of pseudo tutor. Yeah. Just, that just you can get down pseudo to your answer. Tutor. Get down to your win con. Get to the two. The, it becomes very toolbox at that point. Yep. I see Viscera Seer makes any black deck just. Better. And it's great. It's a free sack outlet that never is something you don't want in black. And it can sack for vice itself. To itself, it can. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So you it doesn't say another. It's sack a creature. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a one mana creature. Super low opportunity point. cost. Fantastic. So that's our list. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what you agree, what you disagree. Drop your own power nines. Yeah. In the comments. If we below. missed a card that you think absolutely should be budget power nine, let us know. Tell us what we missed. Why our picks were wrong. Mm-hmm. Tell us what you agree with. What you disagree with. Yeah. And I think the best part about these lists is that you can buy all of these. For less than buying lunch, you can get all eighteen cards for less than <laughs> yeah. lunch. Yeah, all of these were less than two dollars. Most, I would say, probably half of them were probably less than a buck. Yeah, it's so. yeah, super cheap. So, well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. All those YouTube things. Praise Asmore and bon appetit. <laughs>